Bless those cursing you. Do good to those hating you. Pray for those accusing you falsely and persecuting you, that you may be sons of your Father in the heavens, because his Son he doth cause to rise on evil and the good. He doth send rain on righteous and unrighteous. Have you never considered this? How many people curse God? How many people raise their fist and shake their fist into the face of Yahweh? I have heard entire nations And yet Yahweh sends the rain. He allows their crops to grow. You see, even when we curse Him, He continues to love us. And if we are to be true children of Yahweh, then we must love those who curse us. We must love our enemies. We must do good to those who would wish ill for us. This was a new saying indeed. For if you may love those loving you, what reward have you? Do not also the tax gatherers the same? And if you may salute your brethren only, what do ye abundant? Do not also the tax gatherers so. You shall therefore be complete as your Father who is in the heavens is perfect. Take heed your kindness not to do before men, to be seen by them. And if not, reward you have not from your Father who is in the heavens. Whenever therefore you may do kindness, thou mayest not sound a trumpet before thee as the, the actors do, the hypocrites do, in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have the glory from men. Verily I say to you, they have their reward. When the Pharisees would come to give money, they would always do it at a place where everyone could see how much money they were giving. They were buying the applause of men. And they got what they paid for. They gave their money for show and people applauded them, and that was their reward. That was the end of their reward. They bought applause, and they received it as their reward. But thou, doing kindness, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doth, that thy kindness may be in secret, and thy Father who is seeing in secret himself shall reward thee manifestly. And when thou mayest pray, Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites, because they love in the synagogues and on the corners of the broad places standing to pray, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say to you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou mayest pray, go into thy chamber, and having shut thy door, pray to thy Father who is in secret, and thy Father who is seeing in secret shall reward thee manifestly. In praying, you may not use vain repetitions like the nations, for they think that in their much babbling they shall be heard. Be ye not therefore like to them, for your Father doth know those things that you have need of before you're asking Him. Thus, therefore, pray you, our Father, who art in the heavens, holy is your name. Thy reign come. Thy will come to pass, as in the heavens, as also on the earth. Our appointed bread give us today. And forgive us our debts, as also we forgive our debtors. And mayest thou not lead us to temptation, but deliver us from the evil, because thine is the reign and the power and the glory to the ages. Amen. Such a prayer they had never heard before. They had heard prayers by the Pharisees. The prayers of the Pharisees were very carefully scripted to sound beautiful. But Yeshua is telling them, 
Give honor and glory to Yahweh. Ask Him to meet your needs. Trust in Him. For if you may forgive men their trespasses, He also will forgive you. Your Father who is in the heavens. They wanted to know how to be righteous. Not like the Pharisees. And so he is telling them, this is how righteousness comes. But for if you may forgive men their trespasses, he also will forgive you, your Father who is in the heavens. But if you may not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And when you may fast, be you not as the hypocrites of sour countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men fasting. The Pharisees would fast two days a week, Monday and Thursday. Those were the days when the synagogues came together. And so to make sure everyone knew that they were fasting, they would not bathe. They would allow their hair to be uh, disarranged. They, they, would take, they would take ashes and put on their heads. Sometimes they would dab them in their eyes to give them the appearance of a sunken face. they may appear to men fasting, verily I say to you that they have their reward. But thou, fasting, anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou mayest not appear to men fasting, but to thy Father who is in secret, and thy Father who is seeing in secret shall reward thee manifestly. Treasure not up to yourselves treasures on the earth, where moth and rust disfigure, where thieves break through and steal. But treasure up to yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth disfigure, where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will also be your heart. Yahweh does not care about your treasure. The world is his and all that is in it. What gold or precious stone could be valuable enough to tempt the Lord God Almighty? He says, let your treasure be in heaven, not because he cares about your treasure. He wishes for your treasure to be in heaven because he knows that your mind, your heart, your eyes will be fixed upon your treasure, that the treasure matters to you, not to him. The only thing that it matters to him is where your heart is. And he knows that if your treasure is in heaven, then your heart will be also there. And he wishes only for your heart to be with him. He does not care about your treasure but he does care about your heart. And so he says, lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven because where your treasure is, there will your heart be. And he longs for your heart to be with him. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye may be perfect, complete, all thy body shall be enlightened. But if thine eye may be evil, all thy body shall be dark. If therefore the light that is in thee is darkness, the darkness, how great! None is able to serve two lords, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. You are not able to serve God and riches. Because of this I say to you, do not worry for your life what you may eat and what you may drink, nor for your body what you may put on. Is not the life more than the nourishment? the body more than clothing. Look to the fowls of the heavens. They do not sow, nor do they reap, nor gather into storehouses. And your heavenly Father doth nourish them. Are you not much better than they? And who of you, by being anxious, by worrying, is able to add to his age one cubit? And about clothing, why are you anxious? Consider well the lilies of the field. How do they grow? They do not labor, nor do they spin. And I say to you that not even Solomon in all of his glory was arrayed as one of these. And if the herb of the field that is today and tomorrow is cast...